Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, I'm going to speak about five stocks that I have in my portfolio that are not doing well. So a lot of requests has come in that can you speak about like Asian Paints, DMART, Rajesh Exports, Avas Financiers. So I will cover these specific stocks because they have not been doing well price wise. So what is it that I'm going to do on these stocks? Am I going to build more positions? What are the latest results like? What is it that you could potentially consider doing? Important point to note is that this is not a stock recommendation. I am honestly sharing whatever I'm doing on these particular stocks, giving you my perspective. My perspective is not the only perspective in the market. I can very well be wrong. But people expect that I make predictions and you guys let's go and buy it. And if the prediction turns out wrong, then you are responsible. So that is not the way of investing. So please listen to my side of the story. Please listen to other people's side of the story. Reach your own conclusion. It's your money. You are responsible. So from that note, if you appreciate the honesty, do press the like button. It would allow more retail investors to become more fundamentally aware. That is the goal of my teaching and that is the intent with which I teach. I know that you haven't pressed the like button. So do press the like button. I will make this video crisp to the point. So five stocks. The number one stock that we are going to speak about is Avenue Supermarts or DMART. Recently results came out. The results were not very impressive. And now people are saying that, you know what? Kharaab kharaab hone wala hai DMART mein. So let's understand all the salient points. Point number one is that yes, results have not been great, but for that you need to delve deeper into the business model of DMART. Now in terms of the business model, the first key point that you must understand is that the operating profit margin of DMART has been going down, not only for this quarter, but for the past several quarters. Now as a hook you why is this happening? Very simple reason there that when the inflation problem came in. So what is the meaning of inflation? Inflation means general increase in price rise. Now DMART ke products, whichever product that you are buying, they are targeted towards middle class, lower middle class, mid tier class type of customers, right? So these are cost conscious customers. So DMART is not the type of a business which is like HUL. So HUL is a company which can go and do this premiumization of product. 10-15%, 20% say shampoo prices and all that stuff. But DMART can't technically do that because they compete on prices. Their entire model is based on the fact that, you know what, we will be able to control our prices and not increase the prices of our product too much. Now this new inflation problem in the economy that has happened and now the inflation seems to be easing. So hopefully DMART's business will be back on track. The OPM or operating profit margin will stabilize. But in a high inflationary environment, businesses like DMART are not going to do well. We are moving slowly towards a world of medium inflation, not very high inflation, not very low inflation and medium interest rate. So instead of having 0% interest rate, we are going to have 3% interest rate. So these are the bad things that okay, OPM nahi hai, and premium business category they are going to suffer. For example, if you study the results announced, you will clearly see that their apparel business, which is a high margin business that has suffered the most. So what does that mean? It means that the company has very limited pricing power. So with this viewpoint in mind, let me quickly discuss the future of DMART, what is good and bad about it. And then let me share the pricing perspective of DMART. See, from a future point of view, there are two, three good triggers in the company. The first key trigger is the fact that the company itself owns its real estate. Now, what is the meaning of owning its real estate, right? So for example, Whatever DMART stores you see, most of them are owned by the company itself. So rent increase vagra and all that stuff would not happen. If you compare it with majority of the other FMCG players, like one would be Kishore Biani's company, which was Future Mart. Now that company used to rent a lot of real estate. Now, any situation which has happened after 2020, you yourself tell me if you're living in Bangalore, the cost of real estate has doubled. Rent that you're paying has almost doubled. So even for these retail Retail stores, which are brick and mortar operating types, which is DMART, Future Mart, and all that stuff, they also have to pay a lot of rent. Now, in DMART's case, the business model is stable. Why? Because their rents are stable, which is the max spent in whatever their cost structure might be. So this is a very good point, which you need to remember that the business is resilient. It is not a type of a business which is likely to fall like this. Okay, so this is the critical point that you need to understand. The second is that DMART is focusing on something called as DMART Ready. Now DMART Ready is the online vertical of DMART, so to say, and this vertical is likely to exhibit a higher growth rate, right? So these are two central points that you need to know. These are the growth triggers or stability triggers 
प्रोडक्ट्स फॉर अ कंपनी लाइक डी मार्ट नाउ कम्स दी प्राइजिंग रिलेटेड पॉइंट भाई साहब बाई प्राइस में बहुत करेक्शन आ गया है इफ इट इज सच अ गुड कंपनी देन वाई हैज अ प्राइस करेक्टेड वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द फ्यूचर सो लेट मी शेयर सिनारियोज बिकॉज देर आर सिनारियोज इन द स्टॉक मार्केट देर इज नो गारंटी सो लेट मी क्विकली शेयर दैट सो द फर्स्ट की पॉइंट दैट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड हियर इज द फैक्ट दैट इफ यू टेक अ लुक एट दिस एंटायर फेज फॉर डी मार्ट स्टॉक दिस वॉज अ मैसिव ग्रोथ फेज over the last 2 to 2 and a half year it has been consolidating in this box ki in the last 2 and a half years stock has given how much returns 0% returns now if you go and take a look at the revenue growth or profit growth it's not as if that profits have started to shrink no the revenues are also growing profits are also growing it is just that the revenue growth rate and profit growth rate has slowed down so how do you relate this to the price see now the thing is that if you had gone and purchased dmart somewhere here right ki 5000 ke price pe you have khareed ke baithe hue ho so of course you would be trembling a little bit ki yeah, you know what after this right i mean the stock has fallen by how much like 25 30 percent abhi bhi niche chal raha hai right that it has gone 25 30 percent and uh, it has been consolidating i don't know when the breakout will come so what to do in this see i can't comment on that because i have personally built most of my positions on dmart whatever i had to somewhere here only so i am at a loss of like maybe 2% on the entire dmart stock whatever i have purchased and my community members so i run a youtube member community i give out very quick stock market updates there in case you are a serious investor i keep on repeating you will derive a lot of benefits from that community do consider joining it we have very healthy discussions there it's a serious investor community try it for a month see the results for yourself you will see everything being discussed very very honestly there the link is in the description and comment box definitely go and check it out so okay back to the topic let's see i am sitting on a loss of 2% the reason being i purchased this stock because bahut time correction ho chuka hai on top of this i have the intent of downward averaging it in case the stock moves down so then comes the natural discussion ki acha theek hai the stock number 1 is available at almost like a 25 30% discount from the top number 2 two year time correction has happened time correction means that the stock has just moved sideways for the last two years nothing major has happened so why is it that you are saying that you will downward average it it does it mean that it can fall more yes you have to be prepared for the fall also so okay so here you need to understand the scenario analysis and let me talk about the salient points and give you different perspective on this entire issue that is happening see if you take a look at the pe ratio of dmart what you will notice is this that the pe of the stock was 300 at one point in time then it fell and right now it is somewhere around 100 and it has been consolidating at this pe so two scenarios can play out that see the stock consolidates at a pe of 100 and it moves to let's say 120 130 150 so on and so forth ho gayi wo baat second scenario could be ki and people are saying that you know what this 100 ka pe this 100 pe is also very expensive aap mere ko bata do that which stock traded 100 pe 100 pe is very very expensive for a company of dmart size both these scenarios are correct valuation is one topic that no one can be sure of हर कोई अपना अपना परपंच देता रहता है राइट एंड दे गिव देयर ओन व्यू पॉइंट यहाँ बना बनू के एंड ऑल दैट स्टफ नो वन कैन बी श्योर ऑफ वैल्यूएशन एज अ स्मार्ट इन्वेस्टर यू नीड टू बी प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर डिफरेंट सिनारियोज माय पर्सपेक्टिव इज दैट सी द स्टॉक इज कंसोलिडेटिंग यू शुड हैव मे बी लाइक फिफ्टी परसेंट पोजिशन ऑन समथिंग लाइक डी मार्ट बिकॉज वॉट कुड पोटेंशियली हैपन एंड लेट मी हाईलाइट दिस इन स्लाइटली डिफरेंट कलर दैट सिनारियो वन कुड बी दैट द स्टॉक इज कंसोलिडेटिंग इन दिस बॉक्स then it just moves a little bit here only right and then it increases and then it consolidates so this gives you a good opportunity to make like 20 30% return on something like dmart why because the there is trigger for growth it is stable stock correction has happened already on the stock it has been consolidating this is a very strong possibility second thing would be that see ye 100 ka pe becomes the central pe of the stock now which would mean that the stock falls to a pe of 80 70 right then it goes up to 120 then it falls down to 60 70 pe so on and so forth so this moving around of pe could very well happen over the next phase of 4 5 years it has been seen in the past that companies like hul companies like itc big big companies companies like hdfc bank now do teen char saal ho gaye right despite good results they are not giving like massive breakouts right and there have been phases in their journey where they have not given massive breakouts so you need to be prepared for that 
I don't think that DMART is a bad stock, but you have to have the patience. You need to have the ability to downward average it in case the stock exhibits a PE correction. Now comes a very natural question: Ki bhai ye 100 ke PE pe, 100 ke PE pe, why is the stock trading? So for that you need to simply go on investor holding and you need to see that the promoter itself is not willing to sell the stock, right? So 75% is held with the promoter, right? Seven, eight percent here, eight percent here. So kitta ho gaya ye? Almost like. 90% uh, of the stock is with big players. They are not selling the stock only, right? So there is only 10% float on the company, free float on the company. Now, this is something that happened with Adani stock also. Now, I'm not comparing like DMART and Adani company per se, but I'm just helping you understand the free float issue there that only 10% of the stock is with the public. Ye stock ko upar niche le jate hai, right? Depending on the sentiments. So therefore, there can there is a scope for PE expansion also very, very fast. And there is also a scope of PE correction. If you are not happy with the stock and if you have been listening to me for a bit, on DMAT. I'm quite confident of that. If you're not okay, like downward averaging the stock, then you should get out, right? So that is my viewpoint on it, not a recommendation, but I'm just, I hope that through this brief discussion, you got a conceptual understanding of the entire issue that is happening at DMAT and what are possible steps or actionable steps you can take as an investor. So with that thing said, Let's move to stock number two, which is Rajesh Export. And I will try to give a very quick summary of whatever is happening at Rajesh Export. So just in case you don't know anything about Rajesh Exports, Rajesh Exports is into the gold manufacturing, retailing and the ma large majority of the gold supply chain. So it is a gold bagged type of a company, so to say. The underlying is the gold price. Now, this is very interesting because the gold company, hai. for example, Titan has given like massive run up. Gold itself has doubled in the last four years. Bunch of other companies which have to do with gold loans have done really well. And Rajesh Export is right now an outlier. Outlier means that it is like a black swan, a laggy virla type company that entire gold space is doing really well. But Rajesh Export is not doing well. So what is happening with the company? So okay, so let us quickly check the fundamentals first. And here what you can take a look at is ki yaar, iske revenues and revenues bane so definitely, right? I mean, revenues have actually doubled in the last five years. Have profits doubled? No. So profit margin problem has been there. Why? The reason being that Rajesh Export is mostly an export based company, right? There have been so much problem with companies that have to do with exports. Ki kuch bhi bana ke bahar bechne, right? There are, you know, duties. Ye wo. For example, if you're sending your own hardened money, aapne 20% TCS has been levied by the Indian government only. So sending anything outside India has become like a very big challenge. Uh, that's a slightly different point, but on the export oriented point, the central point I want to drive home is that when it comes to export driven businesses right now, almost all the businesses are suffering right from a profit margin point of view. So this is a key point that you should note. A news chalti rehti hai that Rajesh export owners have done some gaple wazi, right? He tax shori karli. Then there was some accounting issue that happened that they did not make proper disclosures. Accountant did not file a report. All this small, 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 small thing keeps on happening on top of this and which is okay, right? But the headache is that if you actually go and check for reliable documents from the firm, you will see that the last con call that happened with the company, I don't know if they have updated it or not, but it's not very easy to find information on the company, right? So even the management has not been very proactive in terms of communicating with the shareholders, okay? Is that a good sign? No, right? But that has always been the case. It's not as if that Rajesh export and all that stuff. So, okay, so baato ki ek baat, right? Should you be investing, not investing? How is it that you should be thinking? So it really comes down to the fact that at what level have you purchased Rajesh export and why? Now, first and foremost thing that you need to notice is the fact that Rajesh export is a cyclical business. For example, you can see in terms of pricing also, it goes like this, literally a sine wave. Okay. Engineer logo pata ho, sine wave kya hoti hai. Otherwise you can Google it. What is the meaning of sine wave? If you have purchased it here, 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 then honestly, I can't help you, right? It's a cyclical business. Why? Because gold itself is cyclical. It's a cyclical commodity. So there will be up cycle and down cycle on gold. And as a result, even something like Rajesh export will have an up cycle and a down cycle. Very, very basic point. Where did I purchase Rajesh export? I must have purchased it somewhere here. I am sitting on maybe like eight, nine percent loss, something like this. Am I worried? The short answer is no. Now, why is that? Let me explain. So, okay, so let me show you the PE ratio of Rajesh export. Right now, it is at one of its lowest PE here, right? So you can see that 
एट नाइन के पी पे यू आर गेटिंग द स्टॉक राइट एनी थिंग कैन हैपन इट कैन फॉल टू जीरो ऑल्सो राइट बट द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ दैट हैपनिंग इज लो इट्स नॉट एज एफ दैट द कंपनी एकदम डब्बा है इट डज नॉट हैव एसेट्स इट डज नॉट हैव एक्सपेंशन प्लान्स वगैरह वगैरह इट्स एट द बॉटम मोस्ट साइकिल सो टू से द स्टॉक अगेन हैज बीन कंसॉलिडेटिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल this is like a downfall this is not even consolidation this is clear like downfall that has happened one could argue that it will consolidate now so you could possibly wait a little bit then aggregate build positions uh, i am also building positions as of now on rajesh exports i have more money to invest in this company don't get over leveraged with this company good thing is that this is a cyclical business when the cycle turns positive you will make money on it when can i say that cycle will turn positive i don't know no one knows right from that perspective important point to notice is that see no one can predict when the cycle is going to turn positive but you can be almost certain that you are purchasing right now right at its one of the lowest possible points the biggest risk there are two big risks with the company one is the corporate governance risk that kuch na kuch issue hote rehte hain owners ke khilaf kuch ho jata hai and all that stuff second is the export risk that this is an export driven business with that said let us move on to stock number 3 which is asian paints so okay so we all understand what asian paint does diwali is about to come so should we buy asian paints and you know sit and then wait for diwali everyone is going to buy asian paints and good good things are going to happen no unfortunately stock market does not function like that see uh, good news and bad news on asian paints uh, the good news is that right now it is trading at one of its lower pe's not the lowest pe but uh, the pe is sensible right that's a if you have recently built position honestly i'm not on on a loss on asian paints way like close to 1% 1 and 1/2% 2% something like gain is there so i'm not on a loss on asian paints just contextualizing it uh, but the stock hasn't given like much over the last uh, since the time i've been holding it why because again if you check right the stock has just simply consolidated for how how long roughly 2 to 2 and a half years ho gaya yaar nothing has been happening on the stock the stock is simply consolidating now what is the meaning of consolidation consolidation means this right this box formation is happening this is consolidation nothing massive is happening ab think about it right that the stock has been in a sideways movement from 2021 since 2021 what has happened okay inflation has happened right second thing is that demand has gone down for housing right 2020 21 2021 phase was a bad phase right for real estate on top of that oil prices first went up then down now it has gone back up so oil price fluctuation has happened and what does asian paints input cost cost of manufacturing depends on it depends primarily on oil prices lot of problem and delay of demand is also there for example jaise consumer durables ho gaye people can simply delay ki are you know what covid situation hai inflation problem is there so let us just wait for maybe like a year or two tab khareed lenge isi similarly people might make the same decision ki yaar ek do saal wait kar lete hain tab kara lenge paint right so as a result businesses like asian paints suffer right is there more downside to the business left i don't think so that there is any massive downside to the business left right so yeah that's that's part a part b is that are you going to make like multi bagger returns from uh, asian paints the short answer is no right I mean, it's very unlikely that it will grow at a cagr of 15 18% this is the expected gain you can make on a cagr basis why because you have already gone through two years of correction right so if you have aggregated already at a good level this is likely to compound at 15 18% cagr in a slightly more risk free manner so i hope that that point is clear there is nothing magical that is happening i don't think there is any massive correction that is likely to happen on asian paints so yahan pe khatam karte hain let's move on to stock number 4 which is avas financiers which is also somewhat related to the real estate sector now avas financiers is a very interesting story right and i am actually aggregating more of avas financiers why let me explain that right so let me first and foremost show you the numbers for avas financiers and if you go on the balance sheet or quarter wise data bhi aap dekh lo right so you will see that company has done fairly well even during covid right so it's not as if that ghamasan mat gaya tha right so it did fairly okay right what about uh, the, the last 10 year data if we quickly check so you will see that the stock has compounded at a massive rate here is the 10 year compounding on the stock right so 72% it's like absolute crazy right last 3 years 20% very very reasonable now you'll say ki our growth rate has slowed down it has fallen down from 20% right 10 years mein well because please include covid in this and covid real estate activity was close to zero right during covid there was 6 8 10 mahine 
so massive crushing of the growth rate for all these companies now real estate like gold also has a cycle it will go up go down go up go down interesting thing about real estate is that real estate cycle is like 6 to 8 years right so 6 to 10 years in fact right ki wo 6 8 10 saal tak cycle chalti hai that if the market in real estate has started to pick up from 2021 which is the actual case then the likely scenario is that real estate market is going to go up till 2027 right so that is how long the thing is and you have to see stocks like avas financiers in that context why am i saying it because it's a housing finance type of a company for middle income slash lower income category people now comes a related point that bhai dekho ye to loan won dete hain right and especially to middle income lower income people to build houses buy houses all that stuff Uh, interest rate if it becomes moderate then will a company like avas financiers get crushed short answer is i don't think so why because a they have already exhibited resilience they have free cash flow going for them on top of that the loans that they are giving are mortgaged based loans mortgage based loans means mortgage backed loans it means that bhai aap if you are unable to pay it they will take your house sell your house auction it get the money back right so that is the benefit of investing in companies where the loans are securitized there is something some kind of a mortgage that is there so the company ka npa is going to be on the lower end only company mein koi problem nahi hai it's just that uh, the big investors like to buy things at a massive discount if you check the pe of the stock you will see that one of the lowest pe that has ever existed for this stock right uh from a pricing point of view there is a very healthy uh, margin of safety so you can check that it is still available at a 50% discount if you have recently purchased it no problem i am sitting on a loss of roughly 20% on avas finance yes very honestly disclosing that one of the biggest losses on my portfolio so to say uh so yeah so that's the simple point there right now it's your call whether you want to aggregate not aggregate i see i do not see any major problem per se ab kal ko kuch ho jaye to of course you can't say it uh, but from a business fundamental point of view nothing wrong last talk is delta corp so much has been said about delta corp so i'll quickly cover it see guys um, when i spoke about delta corp and bhai sab kuch logon ne to video bana diya ki you know what uh, influencers are misguiding people by talking about delta corp and all that bhai sab if delta corp ke bare mein baat karne se it's like misguiding and what not ab mat karo na invest right there is no one is pushing your hands and taking your hand and pressing the buy button on delta corp and all that stuff right so have like little bit of sense that if it is a fake company janboojh ke kuch misguide kar rahe hain log then say we should take action right it's a publicly listed company listing ke paise dete hain right <laughs> all these companies and say we is making money and you know nsc bsc is making money it's their job to investigate all these companies right so i hope this, so that's a slightly different debate but coming back to the topic of delta corp you can do business analysis you can't do gst analysis ki gst wale kis pe notice nikalenge so for context delta corp is a company that runs casinos in goa and when you come to goa you want to gamble and all that stuff you go to a ship based casino that ship based casino is run by delta corp so they run multiple such casinos highly profitable company let me show you the data also profitable company no problem there almost highest ever profits highest ever revenues they are sitting on no problem in terms of business prospects business growth gambling industry bol lo gaming industry bol lo however you want to categorize it these type of industries are prone to regulation so recently regulations came in on 28% gst wali cheez delta corp stock gira no problem bought it uh so that was point 1 what you need to understand is that the recent happening and the company has been that the gst department has issued a notice of roughly how much 6000 crores right and the company market cap is 3 and a half thousand crores the company can't pay it will die right if they have to comply by that notice so what company is going to do is that they are going to fight it in the court now can i approximate whether the company is going to win the case or gst department is going to win the case we can all speculate but nothing much can be done now please note that when i spoke about delta corp i can only speak from a business point of view i cannot speak about like forecasting point of view ki sarkar kya karne wali hai cheez that is beyond anyone's control on top of that what we can do as investor in, and this is something that i categorically spoke that hey delta corp is a part of my 50 multi bagger portfolio now if i'm designing my portfolio that i man ke chalo that if my portfolio size is 1 cr then 30% of that money or 30 lakh will go to let's say 50 multi bagger 
portfolio and 50 multi bagger portfolio mein it will be how much right so if i am buying 50 stocks total investment is 30 lakhs then how much money am i putting on delta corp and what percentage it is so it will be like, like you know less than 1% of my entire amount because 70% to kisi aur mein ja rahe na yahan pe so from that perspective you have to understand portfolio construction if you don't know portfolio construction if someone just listens to the video invest like 60% of their entire portfolio in one company then guys nothing can be done right i mean i explain the entire context it just makes me feel bad that after talking about everything still people make these type of mistakes it's just greed right and you can't blame others for exhibiting greed right from that perspective i hope i'm explaining it with the right intent and you guys are absorbing it from that perspective now comes the natural question that okay akshat what is it that you are doing i am not doing anything okay on this stock if the company wins the case the stock is going to shoot up aggressively if the company loses the case it's a downward journey to zero okay and when i gave and when i spoke about the fact that 50 multi bagger stock i categorically aap jaake dekh lo video right that 20 stocks are going to go to zero why because here these multi bagger stocks for example let me give you right for example angel one i have spoken about i had spoken about uh, a bunch of other industries like zomato right paytm all these stocks have given massive run ups right so those are giving run ups right we are expecting those companies to double right i had spoken about idfc first bank it has doubled already so on that note on one hand you are expecting 100% return on other hand ek bhi stock aisa nahi hona chahiye jisme you know i end up suffering like 50 60% loss so that is impossible that's just like you know a bad way of looking at things be more practical be more reasonable that is the intent with which you should learn i am not doing anything on the stock i am just waiting for the case to get over we'll get to know jeet gaye jeet gaye one night it's in anyways like you know 0.5% of my entire portfolio so it hardly matters from that respect so on that note i hope that you enjoyed this video please watch this video next which is about portfolio construction it will give you more clarity as to how to go ahead construct your portfolio balance it rebalance it also check my pnl statement that will give you a lot of confidence in terms of understanding whatever advice i am giving you and accordingly do portfolio construction thank you so much for watching do press the like button and check out our member community and i'll see you soon.